let's see what happens when I combine these stilettos with these gorgeous colors. Stay tuned. Hello, stranger. It's been a minute since we last kissed. By the way. Hello lovelies, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I have for you a Lux Freestyle featuring stiletto shaping. I already went ahead and did one hand, so on camera I'm just going to show you how I achieve my stiletto shaping. And y'all, please do not come for my e-file. I have had her for about three or four years. I can't remember. It is a Valentino e-file and I just love her. I got it for the silent feature so it doesn't make as much noise as any other nail e-files. But that's neither here nor there. I could give y'all a review. If you want to see that, comment down below review. And I know you're talking about the e-file. Um, because yeah, I got some pros and cons about this e-file. So, don't come for it. It used to be really, really cute and pink and you could see the rhinestones, but I use her every single day, non-stop, and, you know, she still gets the job done. So, I am using my e-file to create my shaping. I don't like to get out my scissors or my straight edge clippers to do this process because you always have to go behind this step with a nail file. And I just to, like to eliminate steps in my process that would save me time, especially with doing long nails. So if you follow my channel, you know that's one thing about me. I will not use a nail file when I'm working with long or extra long or double xl nails just because it stops me from you know potentially hitting the client's hand or knocking their nail tip off i have done it before if you do nails you have done it before where you're filing and you're filing so aggressively that the nail pops off now you have to remove the glue and the tip and it's just an ongoing process so we're working with long nails long tips anything over long i like to just use my e-file to get my shaping and it helps me to get precise i am working on my brand ambassador and i have done her nails for years now so i know she does have crooked fingers all of her middle fingers are pretty much crooked if you can see and i like to hold the nail step back on it and just look at the potential of how each nail will be shaped next to each other just so on the straight on view it looks straight when the client turns their hand it looks straight so sometimes you got to out mouth the crooked fingers and still try to get them straight so i go on this process just by shaving down the sides on the speed of five with my e-file and stepping back to look at the nail making sure it's centered because you don't want to create a bunch of crooked stilettos that's just is not going to work so sit back and watch as I complete shaping these tips and one more thing for the shaping as you can see I like to go from side to side and make sure I am specifically getting a centered stiletto you don't want to push too much from one side or push too much from the other side give yourself some time I always say the foundation and the prep is the most important part especially the shaping so make sure you take your time to get your tips as precise as possible that will save you time on the end when applying the acrylic as well as when you finish filing and things like that so I do like to work from side to side making sure I'm getting it as precise as possible and it always works every single time
and just like that we have magic they are straight if you look at them her fingers are crooked but the nails are straight and here is the first hand of laid acrylic and I'm just going to go through and lay acrylic on the second hand So for my acrylic, I am using Mia Secret Cover Nude Blush, and I am using Mia Secret Monomer as well. It was pretty warm today. I am in the south, so it was a pretty warm day, which caused the temperature inside of my room to be a little warm. I do have my fan that I have circulating, but it was just warm this day, so I had to work pretty fast. So I will use smaller beads on this set only because I can't do my larger beads because the liquid just was not holding so that's one thing I know as a nail tech I would recommend for you guys is making sure you know your temperatures when I start a set I automatically know if I'm going to have to work slower if I'm going to have to work faster with the acrylic just due to the temperature so if you feel like it's drying up super fast on you try to use smaller wet beads and that will help you create still a flawless and smooth foundation i just love how the acrylic melts like butter like i just maybe it's just me because i'm a nail tech but i just love watching acrylic melt like butter omg but yes always be mindful of your temperature and you guys will see me using a few smaller beads just to still get the appropriate apex the appropriate shape and still give a flawless foundation so that I don't have to do a lot of excess filing on the back end Okay, I also wanted to let you guys know when working with warmer temperatures or in your warmer room during the summertime, you want to make sure that your brush is still dense with liquid. You don't want to swipe off too much of your liquid because it does help to keep the thick acrylic more moist. So as you can see, it's not moving as much as it normally moves but it is still very malleable so that I can form it down the nail. And I am gonna be doing my pinch method on some of these only because the acrylic is so warm that it will not just slide down how it normally does for me. So it may look different on all of the nails, but you will get different methods. If you're a visual learner, you'll see the methods on how I work with the acrylic because when I say it was so warm in here it was warm this day I specifically remember because I was just like okay you got to outdo the acrylic the one thing about being a nail tech is owning the material and not letting the material own you period boo So normally I would have wiped my brush off, but as you can see, I'm doing a lot of excess smoothing on the nail because I still want my end product to be smooth foundation. So I'm not going to stop moving that acrylic until I know this is the shape that I want to see. Once you stop moving it, it starts to set, but if your brush is still wet, it's going to keep that acrylic moist until you are done with it. So at this point, I'm going to zip it and let you guys watch as I finish laying this acrylic foundation. And again, I am using Mia Secret Cover Nude Blush and Mia Secret Monomer as well as my all-time favorite acrylic brush. I will have it linked below and I believe it is a size 12. People ask me this often, it's between a 12 and a 16, but I will have it linked down below.
After laying the foundation, I'm taking my 8080 grit file and I'm just reshaping the tips. And at this point, I'm going to get an even more precise stiletto. So I do like to go from side to side, not applying so much pressure because the file is very coarse. But I'm just making sure that I go from side to side as well as under the nail to get that precise stiletto appearance. So I did go ahead and finish these off camera. I had other clients come in and I just decided to speed up a little bit on that process. But I did take my e-file on a speed of 6 RPM and I also took a 180 coarse sanding band and just gently sanded the entirety of the nail as well to refine that point. We absolutely love a good sharp and dangerous stiletto, okay? I wore a set of stiletto nails, that's why I still have that one left, they gave me life. And here are the beautiful colors that I'm going to use today. Of course, it is Beatles brand always. Take a picture or a screenshot if you want to remember the exact colors. And now we're going to get into the freestyle design. So a part of me just loves the Mia Secret nude color and I always want to see it as a base but I don't always want to do a Frenchie so I'm just taking this polish each color in a cascading manner down the nail and I am going to put a different color on the tips of each finger. And I am using my Beatles brand gold art brush.
after applying each color i'm going to cure the polish for 60 seconds and then i'm going to go in with my matte top coat this is a matte top coat that i got from amazon no specific brand i just like how velvety it feels not to take away from the beatles matte top coat because i really love that one as well but when i'm doing art i do like to use this one to put my design on top of if that makes sense it just have more of a velvety texture but i do like the appearance of my beatles matte top coat as well so i'm going to put matte on each nail and then go in with the finish of my design and i'm going to cure the matte top coat for 60 seconds as well So after I apply the matte top coat, I get everything cured up and then I'm going to get my gel polishes set up for the 3D gel design. I have showed how I do this technique on Instagram and TikTok, but I have not put it on my YouTube. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that here. All you have to do is take the gel color of your choice. It does not have to be in this manner that I'm doing like color for color but any gel polish will work you can even do this with clear as well but then you could just use poly gel so so this is a cheat code for colored 3d gel the design i'm going for is this inspo pick that i got from pinterest i saw these cute dots and these colors and i'm like hey let's do it on a nail set so i'm just using clear me a secret acrylic and I put it inside of the gel polish and I'm looking for a certain consistency. You want it to still be able to make dots and move around, but you don't want it so thick that it's like Play-Doh, but you don't want it so runny that it's just like gel polish. So as you can see, I'm able to move it. And once I detach my dotting tool, it just goes right in place. So just like the inspo pick, I'm just going to do different size of the same color balls on the same color nail and I'm just going to make them flow down the nail in the manner that I did the faux French tip. So as you can see my concoction is a little bit on the wet side so I did go in and add a little bit more of acrylic but as you're going on through the process you will know whether you need to add or add a little more polish or add a little more acrylic to get a better consistency and I don't recommend you making all of your colors with the acrylic in it when I was doing this process I put just the acrylic in the polish that I was working with so if I had two blue nails I would work 
those two blue nails first because once you leave the acrylic and gel mixture to the side it will start to harden up and you won't be able to use that mixture so if you have two of the same color nails on each hand i will work with those two first and then move on to the next color until i'm done and you will see that in this process that i will work both same color fingernails until i was on to the next color and as you can see this is already turning out to be so stunning we love the nails we was ooing and on like i absolutely love these most of the times i try to do my clients nails how i would do my own nails so i definitely want to run this back with some different colors because i thought it was just so beautiful i love the 3d balls and we decided to leave them glossy versus making them matte with the nail as well because it adds more dimension so we was looking at these nails like wow oh my god let's finish them i was so excited about this design so yes continue to watch as i go through this process And I also want y'all to notice that I am putting the larger ball in the center, putting a few medium balls around it, and then going around with even smaller balls. You don't want to have large balls, you know, you want it to flow and kind of make sense. So you don't want to have your large balls at the top unless you went from large to small as going down the nail. Now that will also be pretty, but I just wouldn't have... A large ball here large ball there and then all smaller balls in the middle that just would not balance well on the nail so make sure you're taking your time to actually look where you want to place the nails I know it's a bit of a technique but that's what makes us nail artists because you actually have to make sure you're creating a piece of artwork and not just throwing what you see on the nail and not actually creating a masterpiece with it if that makes sense so I'm gonna let you guys watch as I finish this design and I want to remind you to have a little patience because these balls are very stubborn sometimes they don't even want to come off the dotting tool but you just got to work with it and just try to create the best as you can see this one was giving me they want to give you a headache, but you just have to be patient. Being a nail artist, I get that compliment all the time that I'm so patient. And I want to keep that reputation with my clients. So be patient, create your masterpiece, and the girls are going to love it. If you have gotten this far in the video, I want to especially thank you so much for staying tuned. I do enjoy creating this content for you guys. So give me a huge thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed because I have so many more videos in the chamber ready for you guys. And I'm just so grateful that y'all are on this journey with me.
and at this point i do want to apologize the video was cut short due to me having other clients in this day but i did continue with each color in the same manner that i did the other nails this set turned out so beautifully if you want to see the finished look please follow me on my socials